hey, this is Fofamit. And I'm quite known for having really good facial tracking. Some might say I worked on a lot of faces. As someone who knows a lot about face tracking, today I'm gonna give you some tips on how to get really awesome, high quality face tracking, either with an iPhone, Android, or a basic webcam. Number one, the most important thing is having really good lighting. Because no matter what facial tracking thing that you're using, it always needs to see your face in some capacity. So having your face well lit, basically kind of think about it this way, right? Is that your face has to be like well lit as if you were getting like your picture taken at photo day at school. So if your face is super well lit, that means the tracking is gonna be that much better. Number two, this applies for all things as well, which is having really good camera placement. So the ideal position for your webcam, your iPhone or your Android phone, whatever you're using for tracking your face is having a straight on view of your face. So if you're using a webcam, generally that would just be like just above your monitor, looking straight down at your face. If you are using an Android phone or an iPhone to track your face, I would actually recommend having your iPhone in the exact same place you would put your webcam. So just above your monitor, but if you're finding that you're still getting like weird losses of tracking or the tracking's not as good as it should be, you could try turning your phone upside down because the camera or the sensors that are actually tracking your faces are located at the top. And basically all you're doing is you're just getting it closer to getting that straight on view of your face. Third tip, uh, this is for people that are using a, a phone for tracking your face, whether it's Android or iPhone, is having a phone coolers this will be very much your mileage may vary in my case i only have experience with iphones in this case so anything that is below an iphone 13 you are actually going to need to use a phone cooler i've actually done a video on this before and i'm working on an updated video but um, if you just want an easy solution to have a iphone cooler if you're using like an iphone 12 or older then just get this phone cooler it'll work and it'll cool your phone and it'll make sure that you're capturing your face in the highest quality possible. Distance is key. Having your camera or your phone at, at the right distance from your face is actually really, really crucial. So basically the further away you are from the camera or sensor, the worse the facial tracking is gonna be. So if you're one of those people that has like those really weird deep desks or you have like some crazy custom setup, then uh, you might actually need to get like some kind of a phone or a camera mount. You can get super fancy with this. You can use something like a boom arm. I wanna have some linked down below and have like a custom phone mount, or you can just be super simple and just use a phone stand like this one right here. Also, I'm gonna make sure those are linked down below. Now, if you're gonna be moving around a lot, it's gonna be a lot harder to keep your phone the correct distance from your face. And in that case, that's kind of where the big dollars come out. You're gonna need something called an HMC, a head mounted camera. I have done a video about that. There's not a lot of affordable solutions for it, but uh, if you're gonna be moving around, there's basically nothing better than the one that I use, the standard deviation. Like I said, I did a video explaining why I got it. Uh, just gonna be linked up there. So the next tip, once again, this is an I Android or iPhone only tip. Since your phone is being used to track your face, you need some way of reliably connecting your phone to your computer. And generally how most of these are done, it's done over network. Uh, you're using the Wi-Fi that's connected to your phone, and then it's connected to the same network that your main computer is. And then that's how the, those are communicating together. What you should not be doing, very important, do not do this, is you should not be using your external IP address. So basically there's two different kinds of things. There's the external IP address, and then there's the internal IP address. So in most cases, your internal IP address will start with like 192.168, something like that. Any other number generally, that is your external IP address. If you wanna just make sure to double check, you can actually go to on your internet connected device, whether it's your phone and your computer, type in what is my IP address. And if, you, if you're if you using that IP address to connect your phone and your computer, 
what you're actually doing instead of having your phone you know staying within the same in your house your your phone is actually sending the motion capture data out to the internet and then from the internet it's being routed back to your computer it's going way too far and that can cause a lot of problems you want to make sure that you're using the internal ip address and for something like that you're going to need one of two devices a wi-fi router now the wi-fi router itself doesn't need to be an expensive one i'm gonna actually link like a 20 to 30 dollar one down below and this wi-fi router doesn't need to be connected to the internet so essentially all you need to do uh depending on a lot of this is going to depend on your main computer's setup so if your computer is connected by wi-fi then you're going to use the internet cable that comes with the router and plug it from your computer into one of the ports one two three or four into the router if your computer is connected by wire your computer doesn't have an extra ethernet wire port or it doesn't have wi-fi then you're going to also need to get a wi-fi dongle as well trust me this will be worth it and then have your computer wirelessly or wired connect to the router in ports one, two, three, or four, because this is not going to be internet connected. And then on your Android or iPhone, connect that to the router. And then now both of your computers are connected together over a local network. So now instead of having your facial capture data going through the internet and going outside your house and then coming back into your house from the internet, to your computer instead it's just going to be going to the router staying within your specific space and then going directly to your computer it's going to save so many hassles so many problems trust me and the last and final tip which is actually something that's a little bit surprising is making sure your camera is clean having one of those little handy dandy like lens cleaning cloths or screen cleaning cloths microfiber cloth something like that um is actually really really handy if your camera is just like a little bit smudged or there's a little speck of dust like on the center of the camera that can actually import impact your facial tracking significantly so make sure that your camera is clean so just every so often ev before every recording session or stream or whatever you're doing just take the time to, to clean that little lens a little bit especially if you're using it for facial capture and it's being close to your face, the best possible place, uh, it, it can get a little gross and covered with a um, little spit. So just make sure to clean and it'll make sure that everything is capturing properly. And hopefully by using all of these tips in these videos, you can make sure that you have the best facial tracking that you can get using either your webcam, your Android using Meow Face by Suvi or using an iPhone. And this video is actually sponsored by me. So if you're looking for a really great base model to get started with VTubing, and you're looking for a model that is compatible with high quality facial tracking, either using best used with an iPhone, or you can use it with Meow Face. Links will be in the description down below for that. And you're gonna see a little bit of it on the screen right now. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And thanks again to my patrons on Patreon. Without your help and support, I would not be able to do videos like this. Bye. I stream on Twitch, by the way.